Are you looking for top quality LARPing gear? Then look no further than LARPin. LARPin is one of the UK's largest online stores. Jamie and Harriet have just come back from a wonderful event and would love to see you at their showroom in Telford. So go and take a look at what they have to offer over at www.larpin, that's uh, L-A-R-P-I-N-N dot co dot UK and say that LARP book sent you. It's Tuesday, 14th of August, 2018. I'm Stuart, that's Luke, that's Evan, and this is LARP book. So, in today's show, well, I face, face, first of all, it, it is Tuesday, 14th of August. Uh, in today's show, we're going to talk to Evan from Game Theatre Team. Hi, Evan, how are you? Hey, we're great. <laughs> we talk about Bob and the perils of running an event in Wales. We also let you know where we're going to be soon, and we're also going to talk a little bit about Colony Wars. So, let's actually now begin the show properly. Hi, Evan, how are you? Hello. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> it's great to have you on the show. I do. I, I love this little recap. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's almost. <laughs> it's almost like we're doing it again. It's almost like we're doing it again. Almost, almost like, like we're, we're doing, doing it again. again. Deja vu. Uh, <laughs> deja vu. Deja vu. <laughs> uh, yes, you are right, Ram. Redo, redo, redo. Absolutely. <laughs> Pippa says. Pippa says Luke's never happy. Oh, yeah. Honestly, woman, you wait until we get to Curious Pastimes, and then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I might have to get Stuart to have a chat to you because I'm not man enough to do that on my own. <laughs> so, Evan, we're here for a little bit to actually talk about uh, some of the games and what have you that that you run and have been running. The one uh-huh. that did, of course, pique my interest, as we've already spoken previously, um, was basically Dragon Thrones. Yeah, because um, because basically I, I have little news crawlers that basically go along and any word that comes up with LARP in it, which is interesting because apparently there's also a wrestling uh, <laughs> thing that uses the word LARP. I know I get some weird, wonderful yeah. stuff come through the news crawlers. <laughs> it's like <laughs> wrestling. What? No, um, wrestling. which doesn't make any sense because wrestling starts with a W. But anyway, uh, the <laughs> There's some and, rare forms of Mexican wrestling. That's right, yeah. It, it's wrestling. It's yeah. yeah, wrestling. And they wear masks, which are close to a LARP. Exactly. You know, apart from that. <laughs> what more do you know? What do you want to build? So, um, yeah, I, I, I was rather intrigued by the Dragon Throne stuff in the sheer fact of uh, you seem to have amalgamated, uh, from, from what I gather, reading things and what have you, that um, three, types of, three types of LARP or three types of gaming together then to produce this yeah. this massive uh thing that seems to work very well so talk us about a little bit of the gameplay i suppose uh and perhaps even the history of it as well sure um i guess first as a framework if everyone at home wants to have a little exercise uh at their desk you can draw a venn diagram with three circles and in one of those circles you're going to have larp and i'm talking larp more in the continental Nordic sense, uh, free form, rules light, uh, heavy storytelling uh, type of um, LARPing, not the thick 400 page rule book. Um, In the second circle, you're going to have something that's uh, been a very big influence uh, to us in the States from Britain, and that's mega gaming. So mega gaming and other types of interactive game experiences are in that second circle. And both of those have a reciprocal relationship. And then the third is the theater. We're game theater. We're a LARP hybrid. So we don't even really advertise ourselves as a LARP anymore, but a LARP hybrid and game theater is the way that um, we best describe it uh, to new people. And of course, that's the company name. So in the third one's a theatrical element, improvisational uh, performance, stage performance, um, actors that are planted in certain situations. So when you mix that all together, we found that um, it just creates a really magical experience that's quite new and um, quite amazing for bringing people from different backgrounds and perspectives to the same event and they all get something that they want out of it. Okay. So super inclusive. Um, there was a recent article uh, by alternative uh, reality games.net, ARG.net, 
by Michael Anderson, spelled S-E-N, uh, not the uh, S-O-N uh, of Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> yeah, and, and he had a, um, um, a really great breakdown of Dragon Thrones and what he experienced there. Okay. And, um, you know, he, he called it, and this is why I'm starting with him and not myself, because he had a beautiful line, the magic is in the mixture. Yeah. It allows for people who come from one background to opt into something to help their team that may be outside their normal comfort zone, and then they're going to see if they actually love that element of social interaction as well. Okay. So it goes all the way back to what the game theater really is. It's about social interaction, interactive events, immersive experiential events that utilize LARP as one mechanic within the overall structure. Okay. So that's, that's the meta explanation, but I can get into more detail. Yeah, because I, I, I notice as well, and, and correct me please if, if I am wrong, because I usually am. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I saw that you actually do sort of um, uh, tabletop gaming as well. Yes. Uh, as part of it, which, 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 which you know, fascinated me. I, I know I, I've posited the idea on, on some of the smaller LARPs, right? Where us oldies now, you know, are getting a bit sort of, you know, uh, long in the tooth. That maybe we should, yes, yeah, yeah, you, Luke, right? There. <laughs> I shave for this to look, look younger. <laughs> that, um, that, that maybe we should just do a whole uh, big tabletop campaign, and when a battle comes along, then we'll go outside uh, and do the battle, see how it pans out, and then come back in. <laughs> that's, that's something you could do. You could do um, a um, area control resource management type of game. Yeah and then actually physically act that out. But what Dragon Thrones um, provides is um, more of a resolution uh, over the battle maps themselves. So okay. to really get down into how you would be coached um, to enjoy Dragon Thrones would be first that you would have a, uh, an impactful character that we would consult with each and every player about. Yeah. Uh, your background would be about three to four pages long. You would have relationships established in your own Family Kingdom team as well as external relationships. And then you would have um, motivations and objectives that allow you to sort of socially navigate in the cutthroat world of medieval fantasy. You know, Dragon Thrones has a little bit of a, uh, of course, Game of Thrones influence. So we want this to be a little bit brooding, a little bit who can you trust, um, you know, less Lord of the Rings and more, um, you know, uh, Dark Ages, yeah, so okay. to speak. So that's something that really motivates people who like to... Um, sort of hear themselves talk like myself, you know, <laughs> so you can navigate around, you can talk to everybody and come up with these really zany and amazing plot lines, talk to a story uh, teller GM and have those approved or um, get the classic uh, yes. And then, you know, uh, what, what else you have to do to actually make, make this happen. Yeah. So that's really cool. But the tabletop elements are varied. The first one is the mega game, which is very much inspired by the mega games that have been run in Britain. Um, you know, everyone knows Watch the Skies and so forth. These games are really amazing round-based experiences yeah. where everyone has a functional mechanical role in which they can actually have a responsibility in the game round. They're very structured. Okay. So we'll have a giant map and teams can have their generals report to the map and make troop movements in real time as if they're moving in a real map, like as if you're Napoleon moving your troops. Okay. Um, you will also have diplomats that will be arguing over different resolutions once passed or failed will then effectuate the entire global world and maybe affect what had just happened positively or negatively in that war game. Um, you will have uh, masters of coin who will be um, using the resources in sort of like civilization or something of that nature to upgrade your kingdom or trade with other teams. And this goes on and on. There's a lot of other types of mechanical roles that people can opt into to help their team, and it really effectuates um, the personal stories stories as well. Yeah, you know, if we go out and we do something. We get a news feed. We can go right now to uh, Daily Mail. Yeah, yeah. Have a few laughs at what they're putting up there, <laughs> yeah. um, but see what's happening around the world. So in this game, uh, a good example was I had a gentleman for one of the Dragon Thrones who wanted to play a romantic prince. He was a pure larper. He had no desire whatsoever for the tabletop gaming. Okay, and I said great. We're going to make your objective. You're going to need to find your one true love. Okay. But it's not going to be easy. And he's like, that's perfect for me. So he went around, he mingled and, and had courtship with a variety of the different teams. And he came back and he's like, I found my one true love, but the King would not approve it because she was of low birth. 
He had a great king. He played it perfectly. So then he had to run around and find a place that would give them refugee status. Different <laughs> kingdoms, because they're all, they were all marked on the map, these kingdoms, and he found um, one queendom, because we have uh, at least 50 to 60% female players, we're very diverse, who um, welcomed them in. But unfortunately, they were under attack that particular war game round and were in flames, and their citadel was being destroyed and they were looking themselves to relocate somewhere. So then, you know, the frustration, he comes back to me, oh, you know, it's this close. And that's the beauty of it is that yeah. there's actually things happening in this world that are going to affect you on a personal level, a yeah, team yeah. level, and then a global level. Right. Okay. I mean, that, that fair play, that, that, that sounds, that sounds marvelous. I'd really like to have a go at that. And, uh, and we, we, we discussed earlier that when I actually sort of had a look at the website and, and what have you, and, uh, <clears throat> saw that it was at, at, at Bryn Mawr College, right? I was like, oh, that's just up the road from me. Amazing. We can go along <laughs> yeah. to that. Then I kept reading and saw that it was in Philadelphia. And I was like, yeah. oh, maybe... Yeah. Your geography's a... never been that good, though, Stewie, has it? Let's face it. <laughs> it's always been slightly off cue. <laughs> well, I knew where Bryn Mawr was, but, you know... Yeah. Just, but Philly, uh, really? Just take me a bit oh, that... to get there. Oh, Philly. <laughs> Did you misread it? It was named after the Brimoire, and um, uh, and excuse my accent on this. We'll, we'll play a little uh, name that uh, town later. But um, yeah, as we explained when we were, um, you know, with our uh, introductions here, um, we have two locations for Dragon Throne. Both are amazing. Uh, one is Brim Hour, yeah, which is uh, which has been recently voted the single most beautiful college campus in all of the United States. Wow. Okay. Uh, it is the epitome of Gothic design. It looks like a castle. It feels like a castle. Uh, the door rooms do have central air because we do promise an all-inclusive <laughs> experience. Um, but uh, apart from that, it's just simply a stunning 360-degree uh, uh, immersive experience. Okay, may um, I stop you there? Because Brim Mauer in Wales is nothing like that. <laughs> and I mean, nothing like. If Bryn Mawr won the most beautiful college or university in the country, there's no other colleges or universities in the country to benchmark them on. It's just that one because they've got nothing. Bryn Mawr. How would you describe Bryn Mawr, Stewie? Shit. <laughs> is, um, is another word for it. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not that bad, you know. No, it really is. That is, um, yeah, no, no, they're really. I was just getting a second opinion from the other me. You saved me time here. If I'm looking to bring Dragon Thrones to Britain, I should just store Wales. I should just skip Brim Lauer yeah, altogether. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just don't even yeah. say it because people will get you there anyway into false pretenses and everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My search has been narrowed down. It's off the list. <laughs> it's off the list. <laughs> but it's it. It's an amazing location. I can go into the amenities of what the game theater offers in a bit. Um, um, that, that's my uh, you know, travel agent sales pitch, but I'll spare you that right now. Yeah. Uh, the second location that we have is Gray Towers, okay. which is literally 20 minutes from Brim Mauer. I don't know why these places are so close. We don't have many castles in the U.S., if <laughs> not any real castles. But these two look like castles, and they're within a, a stone's throw of one another. That's at Arcadia University outside Philadelphia. And it is a 19th century mansion. Yeah. Uh, it's really stunning. And we're going to be running some different content there um, other than Dragon Thrones. Okay. But uh, we do anticipate Dragon Thrones 4 to return um, summer uh, 2019. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, just, I, I was just literally, I was just uh, on, on the site uh, yesterday and just having a look at everything. Um, mm -hmm. It does look particularly marvelous. I will be perfectly honest with you, uh, but you. But I mean, this is not the only thing you run. Obviously, it's just the one that piqued my interest. Yeah. yeah. So, what? Um, oh, and just wait. Um, uh, people in Facebook, if you want to ask Evan any questions, put it up in chat. Yeah, and we'll ask away as well. Yeah, not a problem with that. Um, so, what other sort of games do you run? Also, I mean, because as I say, it was just Dragon Thrones that piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. Well, Dragon Thrones um, was our first big, fully all-inclusive, immersive um, blockbuster LARP, um, LARP hybrid, and uh, you know, very successful. We've had three of them with an ongoing story, 
And um, again, we plan to run more in the future. But for our other events, we're a very diverse company. Uh, first, we have the luxury, the expensive luxury of being a New York City based event production company. Okay. So okay. we do a variety of different types of events, yeah. Um, yeah. broad spectrum. So the furthest from LARP would actually be our um, off-Broadway interactive shows, where we take people who never even know, wouldn't even know what the term LARP is. They'll show up, we'll hand them a character, we will work the rules within our acting and our dramatic <clears throat> performance, and after a few timed rounds of social interaction, albeit a murder mystery or something of that nature, um, the general public will be dressed up on board, having a cocktail and having an amazing time. Okay. Um, okay. The two events that I can really pinpoint that have been huge successes are first, our first event, Aces and Operatives, which is a James Bond themed casino LARP. Um, it's about uh, hidden identities, hidden traders, who you can trust. Uh, that's actually the first event I ran. Yeah. It's where I met my business partner, Christopher Batarlis of the Game Theater, um, who's also a game publisher himself. And Aces and Operatives has actually expanded to London. It's now being run by our London team, Rogue Events, which runs Bothwell School of Witchcraft. Okay, fine. Very uh, successful. You're going to get a kick out of the other example for our off-Broadway interactive shows. This one's called Midnight Millions, and it's based on a uh, turn-of-the-century novel, Brewster's Millions. And this was at a, uh, an American novel. I know it. Crazy Will, this guy, um, was told that he needs to spend X amount of money within 30 days to inherit all the money. Yes. And keeps trying his best, and it was made into a funny, uh, underrated 1980s movie with Richard Pryor. Yeah. Um, because, because he can't tell anybody that he's spending the money and why no. and all the rest of it. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's <laughs> very what, this, is, this is a party ex, uh, party LARP experience <clears throat> where you show up, you're given a million dollars, and you need to blow it all in about three hours at, 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 the, at a club or a bar. <laughs> you're going to be interacting with game theater performers who are professional LARPers wearing some type of brooch or, or flower or something, and they're all suspects in a murder. Okay. So you have to go around and make deals with people and get rid of your money to get something that each of these suspects want. They're all flawed characters. Maybe they need something like uh, diamonds, or maybe they need something like gold, or maybe they need stock. The problem is, is as you're spending this money, sometimes you're appreciating your wealth. Yeah. So that's a big first no-no. So it's, it's amazing to see people running around with martinis who have now have $2 million and are just desperate to get rid of it in any way <laughs> They even will try to tip the bartender half a million, and that's not not in the game rules. <laughs> so it's, it, the video's on the website, the Game Theater website, yeah. um, Midnight Millions, and it's a really hoot of a game. Um, so those are our off-Broadway experiences. We also do more one-off LARPs, okay. um, which will be for a single evening, um, which will be a LARP mixed with gaming like we normally do. And we have a lot of designs on the website that we're showcasing right now. Uh, one of my favorites is actually um, a prequel yeah, to yeah. the film The Shining, where um, you're determining those events that happened when um, you see um, Jack at the end of the movie, where they have the close-up, and it's 1923. Well, what was happening at this hotel yeah. um, prior to the events of The Shining? So that's um, a design that I am really proud of. But Chris and I have uh, a plethora of designs that we um, we run every few weeks or a few months at conventions and at various cities. Okay, so it sounds like you're, you're quite busy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've got everything going on there, haven't yeah. you, really? Yeah. And of course, that's um, what you were talking about, the, um, the introductory LARP is what uh, we are trying to start off next mm. year. And it's, it's a real, it's, it's, it's a real eye opener because You'd be amazed the preconceptions people come in with when it comes to LARPing. Yeah. They, they don't seem to have any normal thought process about it. It's, 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 it's almost bipolar in its thought process. It's either they get it straight away or they just think it's completely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. and, and I've met very, very few people initially who have either or, or something in the middle of it. They're, they're, it's very hard for them to come in with an open mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that, you know initially you've kind of got to sell them into the the, the concept and say look it's, it's not weird it's not snm um it's not going to be you know kind of strange this is just yeah. 
you know, and it's almost as if you almost have to justify yourself first of all, and that's what we are trying to 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 look at now. And obviously, that's going to be have to be a barrier that we're going to break down so that we can encourage the right kind of people to come on and just just give it a whirl, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, for <laughs> sure. Um, you know, it may sound uh, very simplistic. Some of my uh, own personal experiences in Vice here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we sell a ticket in New York City, we're selling to. Um, uh, somebody who might be uh, a banker who's hasn't even played checkers in the past 10 years and wants to have a good time all the way to somebody who larks every weekend um, yeah. for somebody that's new what we've done that found found that works uh, give them something to do that matters to them I know that seems simple but if everyone has something or some things maybe two or three things that they have to do that matters to them they're going to be motivated to do those things mm-hmm. whereas Experienced LARPers sometimes function from self-motivation. They're going to be coming up with their own stuff and they're going to want your ear to have that approved (laughs) and that really be um, fitting with what their vision is. Then for those new people, they're going to break off into two avenues. Some are going to be natural LARPers and they never knew it. So you give them those things to do that matter to them and suddenly they come up with their own. And they've been converted into the uh, seasoned LARPers, whereas some of those new people are never going to reach that level and they're always just going to be need to be fed uh, things that are motivating yeah. uh, to them and that they're passionate about. And then you keep them in the game and they're having a great time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I can see that. I mean, it, it is one of the one of the, the hurdles we're going to have to get over um, and around, mm. I suppose, to, to, to bring people in, in into these sorts of things. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's uh, it, it is interesting. Now, um, you say you've already got two was it in this country or or a a a group that's running them for you uh yes we have um the game theater london uh which is uh with our um uh, partners rogue events uh they do the wonderful bothwell school of witchcraft so they're running aces and operatives periodically uh check back um with uh rogue events you can look them up on google we do have the game theater london website that we're setting up for them okay and hopefully be getting more designs from us maybe they'll get midnight millions and you guys can both show up and try to lose a million dollars in three hours um but um yeah so we're really expanding with that um we also have a few new franchises in the states we have uh, really, uh high level uh, game masters in various cities like boston and, and la and so forth yeah yeah and then you could just jump ahead into where we're going uh, be, again because the next dragon thrones is really a year away yeah um we are going to be partnering with Jobach, uh, that does College of Wizardry, yes. plus we have the blessing of the other major wizardry colleges to run something called the Cursed Castle. Uh, that's at cursedcastlegame.com, which will be an expansion on the Harry Potter universe. This is not a university. This is not a college. It's not a school. This is a one-off competition where um, various wizards or people who are bestowed with the gift of magic and wizardry will be recruited into a professional wizardry faction, um, sort of like a big job convention. And just like, um, though we're all original IP, but just like, um, um, you know, Fantastic Beasts or something of that nature, these different factions are going to race around the world to solve the challenges of this cursed castle, which uh, an ancient wizard, the lore is on the website very briefly, but an ancient wizard opened um, a dark porthole. And now this castle appears every X number of years in different places around the world and unleashes monsters and curiosities that need to be dealt with. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're looking forward to it. It's going to be at Grey Towers again, which is uh, one of our um, gorgeous locations outside Philly. And um, we're looking forward to that. It's uh, January 3rd through uh, 6th of 2019. See what That you- story, that story sounds very much like a Conan the Barbarian with the castle that moves around. Oh, Wasn't wow. That, I um, yeah, I, I never, I never, um, Put that together. I got to. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good story. They, they always say, don't they, that um, every every story has been kind of tried before. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I love the the Conan series anyway. I love the, the original version. I'm a big fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, I don't know why, because he's really crap at acting. But I just liked him. <laughs> got better with you know, time. But... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, kind of. Uh, it, it was always that run, wasn't it? Isn't it? Massive bodybuilder did films, went into government. It was always going to be that way. Yeah. Um, and you know, but I, I love those kind of stories um, because they—they, they, I suppose, they remind me of my 
childhood as well oh, you know because I, I grew oh. up with all of that kind of there stuff. you go there you go pixies also said sounds like krull with its black keep yes yeah yes. that's right yeah, yeah. krull blimey that's a bit of we're we're definitely um kids of the seven i mean <laughs> seven and eighties. Yeah. um you know chris is a little bit younger than me but um you know sometimes he he his tastes is even older than mine <laughs> uh, we really uh dig back for these types of uh, classic stories because they just always form the great baseline for new stories. So, um, you know, just like any any company, we're not trying to uh, reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to bring together everything we love and yeah, make yeah. it a mix that hasn't been done before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so so yeah. you'll have to, you'll have to like, um, let us know when these things are, are going to be coming up and uh, properly because, I mean, uh, we're, we're friends of, 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 of Joe Buck Studios and... Close. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So you're gonna have to definitely, definitely let us know when, when that's all sort of happening. And and, yeah. and and where's the happening? It's happening in Philly, you said. Yeah, at Gray Towers, Arcadia University. You can see Arcadia University photos and video on the DragonThronesGame.com website or on CursedCastleGame.com website. It is partnered with Joe Bach. It's their first uh, Wizardry expansion okay. anywhere. Really, well, they have a, one or two ones like, um, you know, in, in, in Poland that are sort of an expansion. This is the first one that's outside of that region. But okay. we do have the blessing, again, of other uh, prominent schools, yeah, yeah. Uh, which we all know and love, that uh, want to, you know, allow their students uh, to mm -hmm. join us as well. But it's you don't have to be a wizardry student. This could be something that could be for somebody who's never LARPed before and frankly just likes the idea of a more adult Harry Potter adventure. Who, who it's, doesn't? It's, who doesn't like the idea? The idea of more adult Harry Potter, but maybe that's Harry me. Potter. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's just you and Hermione, and you have to stop, Stuart. It was funny the first time, but then it got really worrying. Then there were the court orders, and now you have to you have to stay a certain distance away from her. You know, I was thinking. Do you remember um, in the in the very distant past where Klaus said that? The UK was really, although it might have been, you know, kind of uh, an originator of, yeah. of, of LARPing, that they, you know, kind of the rest of the world views us as being incredibly conservative. And I love the fact that, that you, um, you know, kind of everywhere else around the world is, has really embraced LARPing. But we in the UK, I feel, are still quite far behind. I think we, we kind of take it to a certain level, but yeah. we're very insular. Um, and I just wish, I just wish that someone would have the courage from, you know, the rest of the world to come in and give us a go. Because, you know, I, I'm absolutely convinced that if we had the right kind of leadership, I suppose, and, and the right kind of companies that we could do more of what you've got in London. You know, I, I think it's a shame, isn't it, that we've only got one place down in London that's doing what you're doing. Well, mm -hmm. I, or at least attempting it, you know. I tell, I tell you what, then, Luke, let's, let's put our money where, where our mouth is, right? If you want to bring this over to the UK... Yeah, and what yeah. have you? We will find venues. We will do. We, we will do the legwork, mate, right? And and we'll help you run one over in the UK. How about oh, great? That? Yeah, if you could find us, uh, find us something that has even just the essence of medieval or a castle, we can bring Dragon Thrones over there once we're um, complete with our first run on some of our other we're, events. We'll, yeah, we'll, we are swimming in castles. We're swimming. We 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 we've all got a couple of castles each, mate, over here. I got one in the back garden. <laughs> <laughs> but I am stood on a moat right now. <laughs> Wales, awesome. Wales is full of Honest. castles. Honest to God, it, it's there's so many Everywhere. castles. It's ridiculous, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether or not any of them have been converted to a hotel that's got all the amenities, what have you, that's another story. But <laughs> well, we... now we know a place since we're talking about beauty spots called Merthyr Tidville. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mirtha is this beautiful. I'm lying, of course. I, don't, I can't even finish that sentence. We're going to have to go somewhere else. <laughs> Mirtha's not available. <laughs> even their castles are on bricks. I'm not saying it's rough. I'm just saying it as it is. <laughs> anyway. yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, refer any castles to me, any of your viewers. Refer to info at thegametheater.com. You know, Dragon Thrones is ready to go. I always tell Klaus and others. Find, get us a castle. We can air. We can airdrop this. You know, it's ready to go. Let's come out of the sky. The land. You'll get the characters. You'll get the pieces. It'll be a big box, but it's it's very manageable. This is not um, similar to like um, you know those those Warhammer LARPs in in Russia, where I think they actually have tanks that are redone into dragons. I mean, this is a fun 
you know, LARPing tabletop adventure. That's very, um, it, we can produce it anywhere. It's very yeah, yeah. versatile. And just to touch upon what Game Theater promises is we like to put a lot of the budget into the player comforts. Yeah. So we will find the hotel, we'll get the catering. You're going to be treated like you're um, on a cruise where everything's all included. Uh, yeah, for yeah, yeah. Dragon Thrones or anything we do in the States, um, we like to bring in the honey mead, um, wine. You don't pay for anything. It's like a wedding for three days long. So it really <laughs> shatters reality and brings you into a very um, immersive yet bountiful environment. So we love woodland LARPs, and there's something magical about that as well, camping out. But this is what the game theater does is more in the extreme of an all-inclusive destination vacation. Yeah, okay. So they, you they, had me at mead. You had me at yeah. mead. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, folks. You heard Evan, right? I want you all now to go out looking uh, in your back gardens for a castle <laughs> that uh, we could possibly use that would have the amenities, or or if not, the castle itself has the amenities, something close by uh, that we could use for the hotel, etc., and blah blah blah. Right. Uh, sure. Maybe something adjacent. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, <laughs> so I don't think many of our castles are livable uh, anymore, to be honest with you. But hey, but hey. it's a great idea, isn't it? Because, I mean, realistically, we should be getting our inspiration from abroad as much as we inspire, um, you know, kind of especially with storylines and what have you. And it'd be lovely to have that kind of enthusiasm that, you know, um, of Klaus and of yourself, you know, yeah. that you, you bring um, because yeah. I think that sometimes we we do we do become a little bit insular. I, I don't think it's a criticism. I think we just we're used to what we know, um, and I think that you know there's there's so much diversity out there in you know Europe and in America that it'd be just wonderful to have that kind of stuff come over here as yeah. well, just to give it a go. Yeah, mm -hmm. ex exactly. You know, if nothing else, to mm -hmm. to kind of you know, I. I know, I know. We instigated the, the the whole LARP sort of movement, as it were, many, 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 many years ago. Uh, but the but yourselves and the Europeans, uh, they've just grabbed it with both hands, given it a really big hug, uh, you know, and and have, and have gone for it big style. Where we've gone, we're, we've just gone. Oh, we'll just continue what we were doing then, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. And and it's it's about time we 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 shook it up. I think. Yes. You know, what we do or our other companies that do similar things would be a massive hit in the UK. I was just at the UK Games Expo with uh, my partner, Chris Batarlis, for his company, Everything Epic. EverythingEpic.us is his game publishing company. We were promoting that. And just everyone we talked to, uh, the fact that um, there's a huge mega gaming contingent, actually, they're the leaders. You know, Britain's yeah. a leader yeah. in, in mega game in, um, innovation, plus uh, the LARPing community that's there. Um, anything of this sort, either be us or somebody else uh, would be a big hit. Just a matter of um, putting it all together. That's that's the that's the you know now, something like this is an iceberg. I mean, you see yeah. this image and it looks really cool. And we've got videos, we got photos. Klaus has videos, they got photos. Our colleagues do, but underneath is the the remaining ninety percent, which is um, all of the um, administration, production, and attention to detail over a period of almost a year sometimes yeah. to make some of. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh... Pix we know that. Pixie's just sort of added something. I'll, I'll I'll just bring it up on on screen there, move it about a bit because it's a nice long one. Uh, it's not about the money. It's about the hobby, the game, the players. Run an event to make money for your next one, obviously, uh, and keep improving it. Rule one hundred one of LARP. Rule one hundred one of LARP uh, running. If you don't believe in your product and players, it will never work. Couldn't it's true. couldn't agree more on that. It's one of those sensible blooming things it's, it's got to be done um but i think it's a, probably about time that we we played a little game evan because okay. I, I i know i know that you you base a, a a lot of your your names uh for places and what have you uh f from from streets and towns and things in wales so this is going to be hysterical uh <laughs> Because we've already had to uh, correct him on Bryn Mawr. Uh... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm so... looking at uh, Google Maps right now for yeah. Wales. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what we use. Okay. So you want me to jump right into this uh, this game? Is there any music? Um, I I I don't think I've got it. I tell you what, I've got I've got this. There we go. Yeah. There oh. we go. And I'll just bring. 
We we're Dragon Thrones. We uh, we named our uh, I'm talking louder. Is the music <laughs> for Dragon Thrones? We named the farthest reaches of the map beyond the wall. Snowdonia. Snowdonia. That's fine. That's easier. That, that's you've got yeah. that one right. That's, You're uh, not even trying. No, come on. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm starting with the 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 easy ones. Yeah. Um, okay, there's something uh with two L's. Uh, this is gonna be brilliant. Landfair. <laughs> Sorry, say, say it again. Say it again. Landfair. L L A N fair. And that's near. Oh boy, Carinian. <laughs> right, that's that's Keridigian. <laughs> okay. Okay, and that's yeah. Lan Lanvour. Lanvour. Lando Calrissian. <laughs> Uh, that's right. That's exactly it. Uh, named after many of the Star Wars um, yes. people and let's, places. Let's see if you can actually pronounce Clan Vower. Yeah. Clan Vower. Well done. That's very good. Oh, that's, that's nice. Honorary Welsh. Here's one that has my fancy and we would use in the game. Uh, Rayader. <laughs> Radder. Radder. Yeah. Radder. Oh my god. I, I have to, you, you say you get this. I, I came from Birmingham, so I was from England when I first came. And uh, when I first came into Newport, I asked where Weistrad Minach was. Yeah. <laughs> Which is actually pronounced Ustrad Manach. Ustrad Manach. Yeah, Manach. With the Manach at the end. <laughs> Go on, next oh, one. Here's one that's in the game Pembroke. Oh yeah, that, that oh, is that is literally, that's, literally oh. as it is. Come on, that was easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh, here's one. Buleth Wells. <laughs> Bill. Bill. Bill Wells. Wells. Yeah. Bill Wells. Bill. Okay. Bill Bill Wells. There's there's a, there's a th. Bill Wells. Bill. Okay. So Bill. I'll, I'll so Bill. Shot. Yeah. So it's Bill th Wells. So Bill. 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 Yeah. Well, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving this. Hey, this one's on the uh, on the um, on the ocean here. Yeah. yeah. Abri Stewith. Oh yes, that's yeah, a that's, very that's famous a, place, Abri yeah, Stewith. Yeah, yeah. Aberystwyth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth. Yeah. Aberystwyth. You're gonna be going back. You're gonna be correcting everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like <laughs> slang. Yeah. It's like slang in Wales for like when you're upset with somebody you need to talk to them. I, I have a risk with you or something like that. Pixie Noir who is very naughty. It's like they don't feel bad, Evan. The Welsh have their own language. It's okay. I just look at some town names and just go Wales. Yeah. Um, and if you remember, do you remember how I couldn't say Lankayach Vaur? Yeah. Um, so I said Nelson, which is the nearest town to it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, next one. Uh, Crickowell. Crickowl. Oh, that was so close. That was so close. Can you say McCuncliffe? McCuncliffe. McCuncliffe. That's wow, a good one. That's a good one. And uh, Abitillary. Abitillary. Yeah, yeah Abitillary. I, I sound like a uh, um, a bird when I'm repeating these things. <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's, it's all good. You've done amazingly well, in, in, in fairness, considering that, uh, you know, most Welsh people have to have a pint of spit in their mouths to actually say the place names, um, so don't worry. And they kind of scare people with their close harmony singing as well, so it's, you know, it's nothing I'm, I'm really just, to be afraid. I'm just really glad you haven't tried to put in Chlanvaya Puth Gwyngith Guthgerith Go Tisolia Go to Silia or go go go, because that would be just ridiculous. Yeah, who, who can't say that? Sounds like something from Army of Darkness. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Get it right. Sounds like a spell, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You kind of want to do that afterwards. And know? I and I know I didn't get it all in then as well, because uh, yeah, you will have yeah. to look it up. The longest uh, Welsh place name. There's even people that will pronounce it for you. It's funny, uh, but oh. it, it is a literal translation translation of where it is. Yeah, because <laughs> we as Welsh are not very imaginative sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so where's this place then? Oh, it's over by the brook, by the, by the church with the white steeple on the, <laughs> and they've literally named it like that. <laughs> Next to Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> so um, 
do you, do you have plans? I mean, obviously, you're you say you're New York based. Mm-hmm. Um, are you are you planning to come over, or are you, are you what, what are your plans for the next six months? Uh, next six months, we're going to be um, first running a game convention. Believe it or not, oh, in okay. New- this one's called First Player Go, which is a 1980s nostalgia retro themed game convention with an overarching story. You go to most game conventions, you have vendors, you have different things you can opt into, games you can demo. Yeah. This one, everything you do is going to affect the story. So in some senses, it's a LARP, but it's opt into. So very much um, inspired by, um, again, 80s nostalgia. It's firstplayergo.com. And that's in New Jersey, um, minutes from New York City. That will be in um, the first week of December. Okay. Um, after that, we have the Cursed, the Cursed Castle, CursedCastleGame.com, which will be early January at the amazing uh, Grey Towers Castle. Um, following that, we are planning on possibly multiple events in the summer of 2019. So that noise is, noise is just my phone. Um, we are obviously in talks with Joe Bach and other uh, European studios to both bring our experiences over to York and also possibly bring their experiences over to the States. Okay. And we're constantly pushing to just get into new markets. Um, mm-hmm. The international art community can sometimes feel like a, a small place. Mm-hmm. So we're just trying to open doors by bringing in new content to bring in new people who may be inspired by some of the other things that we're doing and then convert them into game theater um, players and followers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. The, um, well, if, if, when you do bring stuff over to Europe or what have you, let us know because uh, mm-hmm. we can get to Poland really cheaply. We found out. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, I think it cost uh, Rob and myself around about forty-five great British pounds, and that was a return flight. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> it was ridiculously cheap. You know what I mean? To he get was to... walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was hanging on to the, the wing, but apart from that, it was all good, you know. Hey, oh. hey, if Tom Cruise can do it, so can I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, took, we had the opposite experience, and I, I'm fine me naming the name. We took a, a Primera Air. I don't know if you ever heard of Primera Air. That was from um, the New York area, direct flight to Birmingham. It was like the only flight that would be doing that and those are like converted cargo planes from the 1980s <laughs> like, it was the most uncomfortable flight i've ever had in my life i bet i don't re- recommend it i recommend if you need to go to the uk games expo uh anybody there in america uh fly into london and just take the train oh boy <laughs> but, yeah. yeah too right uh, just on a bit bit rough to be honest with you that was rough yeah, yeah. definitely yeah, definitely. Europe, yeah europe um you know compared to the states it's you guys have the infrastructure and, and the direct flights to really make these things happen. So we yeah. would be mm. happy to come over. Well, let let mm. us know, all right? Let us know, you yeah. know, because I'm I'm sure Klaus will probably want you to go to Poland uh, or something like that because I know he can he can get really good prices on on, on on a lot of things out there, which helps mm. yeah. you know keep the game cost down a little bit. But uh, you know uh, those sort of things. So just let us know, all right? Mm-hmm. For sure. Fantastic! Absolutely. Fantastic! Um, now, so so people can actually find you and everything that you do. Uh, tell them how to get in touch. Okay, uh, super simple. I'll give all my websites and, and the spelling. Uh, the first is uh, thegametheater.com. Theater is spelled in the old British version, R-E. So thegametheater.re.com. So so, uh, the, so the proper way. Just just saying. Yeah, the proper way. Uh, <laughs> after that, you can. Uh, Easily find Dragon Thrones as dragonthronesgame.com. Okay. Uh, we are not um, selling tickets yet for any future events. We're still uh, in the negotiations and where we want to, you know, what the dates and so forth. But uh, there should be a fourth uh, Dragon Thrones in 2019 because there's just the demand for it. Yeah. Um, the next big LARP, so to speak, will be Cursed Castle along with um, Joe Bach. And again, the other wizardry schools are, are invited and helping. That is uh, cursedcastlegame.com. And um, you can see everything on the events page on our website as well. So if there's anything small that we're running, either be it London, another U.S. city, uh, that will be posted on thegametheater.com on our events tab. Do you have a mailing list? People yes, connected? we have a mailing list. Yeah, you can subscribe um, on our home website, thegametheater.com. Right. And um, then also um, sign up. For the for Curse Castle on CurseCastleGame.com. One thing we do which is unique, 
and this might be interesting to explain to some of your viewers, is we use an application process more often than just posting tickets. That's not because we're hiding pricing. That's not trying to entrap you into a um, you know used car salesman room. <laughs> uh, it's really actually allowing people who really have interest to get our attention on what's the best way to contact them, what their background is, and what their interests are, so we can more intelligently inform them about what to expect, so they can be better educated on what's offered. Oh, yeah. uh, so that's part of the reason why we use this application process. Once we go through the initial names in the application, we reach out by email or, or messenger or even phone, um, we will then publicly post tickets and sell those as usual. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is, is that the police at your end, by the way? Yes, that's a siren in Brooklyn. Yeah, that's probably the spelling police for your poor spelling of theatre. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <bad> yeah. <laughs> who, who, uh, Cyan says, who left the necromancers out again? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, you are you are more than welcome to, to stick around, Evan, and uh, participate in the rest of the show, but we, uh, you know, we're we're going to be talking about the, the, the other stuff that's going on. Uh, but it has been absolutely marvelous to have you on. Um, okay. So it. no problem. Uh, so uh, Luke and I were at uh, Brotherhood of the Black last we weekend were. at Chlan Lanvech Vau, Nelson, Nelson. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was it, do you what? It was a marvelous event. It was very well put on. It was very well sort of orchestrated and run and what have you and there were lots of things going on but unfortunately because it's wales um it rained a lot uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. which is amazing because you know we've only had like a small heat wave uh yeah. you know for for the for the rest of the time but when yeah. the event was going on yeah it chucked it down uh it did <laughs> yes is, that is <laughs> which was a damn shame but you know fair play um keep keep an eye out for next year because I, I i really hope and it should happen again um in in that respect and, and hopefully we can put the proper requisition forms in uh for the weather uh yes, to, get, <laughs> to get that done yes but fair play it it, it, it was a good event wasn't it, wasn't it luke fair play yeah it was it was very good. It's it's it, it is very hard to run those kind of events because you're at the mercy, especially with the with the first event, of um, getting advertising right and getting the interest. Uh, we not only do LARPing but we do cosplaying. We like to introduce medieval reenactment into it as well, so it's a little bit for everyone. Um, and so there's quite a diverse um, yeah. you know um, group that we're trying to you know uh, sell to um but i think i think we did really well um yet the weather always is a bit of a downer because of course people like to come out into an, an open air event in in the nice weather yeah. um and you just can't guarantee that so that was a bit of a hamper but we did really well we thought we did um we reached out that definitely the venue like us and you know yeah. we're, we're looking next year at we've already been talking to them about next year's event um and like many events you know you 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 do things and you think you know what that didn't work or you know kind of we'll we'll change this the next it's it's, it's this massive learning curve um and it's it's really just a matter of having the confidence to to go ahead and go do you know what we we didn't get it right this time we're going to move forward um but we all had a bit of a whale of a time uh bell end uh the the camping phenomenon that is uh, actually made a kind of a um, you know a huge resurgence. We had um, I'm going to have to give this away. We've got a um, there's actually a flag, a, a proper maritime flag um, that actually means you need a tug. Now in the UK, that's just hysterical. Um, and if you were to put that onto your your tent, everyone's just going to have that little naughty grin. What I might do is 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 get a couple of those for people who might just be as twisted as we are. Um, and every time they want to camp, they just want to kind of display that. <laughs> Hello, I need a tug. Yeah. Because that for us just is something. I don't know. It's 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 definitely a UK ism there, uh, but it means something completely different in the UK. I don't know how you Americans view that. <clears throat> I looked. Up, I looked up Fair Play. Yeah. And it, it. This is not what you were attending, but it returned uh, uh, Chari Twegg. 
Right. Okay. Broadway tag. Uh, that's fair play in Welsh. It's 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 another event called fair play. But oh. okay. I was trying to find it. <laughs> but anyway, you'll I have to have a look at Brotherhood of the Black anyway, because it, it will go from strength to strength. Yeah. And it, it's and I think it's um something that we are investing a lot of time in. It, it needs yeah. to be right. Um, and like I say, good first year. We yeah. had the Crimson Moon, who are wow. Yeah, they just are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Crimson Moon is a bar that will basically emulate themselves to the event that they're at. So if you're at a 1920s, you know, kind of murder mystery, they will change their bar to to emulate a 1920s bar. Uh, if you're in Sword and Sorcery, Lord of the Rings style era, they'll do that. Um, so they try and just accommodate whatever kind of uh, system is being run yeah. um, and it's run by very very good professional and uh, and quite a very capable people who sell marvellous drink so it is just <laughs> it's, it's a marvel to have them there yeah. I think my tab is the lowest I've ever had it yeah because we, uh, cause we were hardly in, yeah we were hardly in there because we know we do so much but I mean yeah. I, I, I think I think we have to do a little bit of a shout out um for the red coats and the the German contingent yes. uh, that that, yes. that that came over uh for us. Yeah. Um fair play. Yeah. Super, super knowledgeable. Wow did Wall they know Street. their stuff. There was one guy who was just a walking encyclopedia, um yeah. you know, for, for, for the red coats and, and the rifles and what have you. For, uh, fair play. Uh, and and for for me, I think a personal shout out to uh, Cafe Eight Three, um, yes. <laughs> who is a wonderful woman. She she's got this uh, an, an amazing um, silver bullet. You, in, you know the the, the trailers, um, Evan. The the silver bullet trailers uh, that she's converted mm. or had converted into um, into a cafe. Uh, so coffee and tea and all the rest of it uh, thing. And she is a wonderful personality as well. She is superb. Yeah. Uh, she's just nice. And she supplied us with the best coffee I've had in quite a while. So I was yeah. happy with that. Oh, oh it's a beautiful <laughs> moment. Yeah, beautiful yeah. moment. Uh, yeah, the yeah. photos are great. The so, photos yeah. are great. Um, they remind me of the um, the larger, more um, high production uh, Ren fairs in the States. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it looks like a lot of fun. So Yeah, yeah fun. it's... And, and and there are lots of events. I mean, you know, when you start to run these, you, you, you start to have a look at the things that work everywhere else. Yeah. So that, you know, for, for example, the Crimson Moon will bring its own people, if you see what I mean, because people will just come just because the Crimson Moon are there. Oh, yeah. um, and with the reenactors and the cosplayers and the LARPers, it was really trying to encourage anyone to turn up to say, well, look, if you just want to get a cloak on and go and drink in the bar, it's fine you're as welcome as the person that wants to reenact, you know, a battle. And we had a few of those, didn't we, with cannons yeah, yeah, flying yeah. off everywhere. And, um, and we had a, you know, bar brawl as, uh, as you know, kind of as, uh, as they go. Um, and it is, it's an, it's an amazing thing. We think we've actually clicked onto something. We've found something that the general public and LARPers actually quite like to go to. Yeah. Um, not much of a story, but there doesn't necessarily need to be. We just <laughs> we run the events uh, just as is, and we just go with it, you know. Well, um, well, I, I mean, look, the 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 story loosely <clears throat> loosely balls around to let's see how we can stitch up the Mad King George, which is you. Yeah, which is me. Um, and they they've tried really really hard, and every year they've failed. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll be honest with you, it's because I rule. Because <laughs> you're the king. <laughs> Yeah. The king, man. Um, <laughs> but it is, it is, it is really, really good. So yes, yeah, so watch out for that again. It's, um, I mean, next year now, it's, it's so, so much work has gone into it by so many people, really. Yeah. And then it's over so quickly, and then you start going right. What next? You know, that that's the big thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and as I'm sure you've had this over in America, where you, you have to try and fund things. And you start going, right, that didn't work this time, or we've got to get money available for this. How do we raise money? How do we get capital? How do we, you know, encourage people to commit, you know? Um, and that's what we're trying to do now. And, and next year with Ram as well, you know, um, trying to assist. We, we kind of said that it would be a really good idea if 
we've always talked about LARPs and about doing it, but why don't we try and set something up yeah. so that our listener can, uh, you know, start to get an idea of the kind of trials and tribulations that you get um, yeah. setting up a LARP and getting the location and the licenses and all the things that go with it. Like you were saying, that tip of the iceberg, um, yeah. just to make something go, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. Yes, a lot of you know, people don't realize how much work goes into actually building one of these things and, oh, and getting it all ready. You know, yeah, it is incredible. My, um, my, um, my, my, I've got a lot of time. Uh, Ram's on online listening to, and, and and I know I've seen, you know, things that Ram is doing and the idea is that, that he's coming out with, you know, and you just know it's going to be a really good, you know, kind of thing because you're with people who've got so much drive um that it, it you know it would be hard to fail if that yeah. makes any sense and i think what ram ram's idea of of trying to get people who've never really done LARP before um is something i think that we should do more of but hopefully encourage the enthusiastic from the rest of the world to come into the uk to to get us to to reinvigorate what we've already got not that it's bad i just think it's always good to have you know kind of um more ideas more you know kind of trials of different different ideas systems and characters you know yeah absolutely. so yeah. so cool yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, let's let's kind of let let people know where we're going to be then luke so the the next event that we're going right. to be at is uh curious pastimes the curious renewal pastimes. of magic event uh so that's always 900 plus people oh. um at a game um and yeah. it's going to be awesome the... i love i'm so looking forward to it my little boy who's nine by the way um isn't sleeping at the moment uh because he keeps on saying when i get there can i fight 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 because he's just that's all he wants to do um <laughs> and you know and i'm sort of going really can we just set up the tent first of all you know he was yeah i have to say yesterday <laughs> All he would do, he's now got this new sword, and every time I bent over, I had a sword at my ass. Um, <laughs> and he was just picking a fight every single opportunity. He's going to be like I don't know what at Curious Pastimes because uh, he's, he, you know, he's going to be like a Tasmanian devil. I think we're going to have to we're going to have to tie him down. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, see Curious Pastimes. I, you know, you hear so much good stuff about them, and you know, kind of, and, and you know, they're not the only people. But I'm really looking forward to coming to this event. So yes. Um, uh, well, that's where we're going to be, and that's at the end of this month, is it not? Yeah, two weeks' time, two, isn't it? Two weeks' time, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pixie just said, uh, they'll be, be busy in the event team at Renewal. Make sure I drive by to troll you guys in high viz well just yeah like, yeah just, bring it pixie yeah just, that's just, right just yeah. let you know pixie right that luke does actually want to do a little bit of monstering at that's this what i'm event, here for you know at this event so uh yeah let's let's see if we can get him battered to, i mean to uh get him to play uh <laughs> what happened there <laughs> nothing nothing at all nothing at all talk talk, talk yeah, to but... pixie yeah well, we get, we'll have to go. Pixie and I will have to do it so we can pick on you, Stu, because uh, you're going down, uh, big star. I'm um, just filming. That's all I'm doing is filming, mate. That doesn't matter. <laughs> we just want to pick on you anyway. Yeah, well, you pick on me anyway. Luke, your son's at that age. Um, I remember last year when I was at the New York Ren Fair as, as a lark, um, I bought an inflatable sword from Amazon.com. And I had this really sophisticated uh, um, nightly outfit, but with an inflatable sword. And it was this little boy, about nine years old, and his sword broke. He had this wooden sword, and he was upset. So I gave him my inflatable sword. And then an hour later, he spotted me, and he started hitting me on the leg with it. And his mom was like, don't do that. He gave you the sword. So there was this impulse. And, and he was hunting me out the whole whole day and trying to attack me with the inflatable sword that I gave him. So I've been there. It is. It is so cool, though. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it is really. It is so good, and I think it. You know, we forget how. Um, you know, I, I think children they grow up too quickly, and you know what I love about um, the whole thing about LARPing is that you can become something else for a weekend, and for a child, um, and anyone really, really young, and I still get a buzz out of it. You know what? It's the best thing in the world. Um, just to to get away from the humdrum of maybe your life, um, and for me and, and me alone, I, I just love it. So yeah. to see my little boy 
getting into it and, and getting excited about it and wanting to do it is just it's it's a wonderful thing because you know what i think he's wasting away on his playstation and it worries me that uh, we can't influence him enough to want to go and do more so you know i force him to come along but thankfully he's quite forgiving but yeah it, it, i think it's going to be great i understand that with cp they're really they're really down with you know kind of um the family thing as well so yeah i, I i'm really looking forward to it i, I can't can't say enough about it really you know i'm, I'm just it's it's going to be a I, I don't know who's going to get more excited me or charlie yeah i <laughs> think i think we both know i it's me in it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think we know. Yeah. I think we know. I think we know. Um, so that, that, that's where we're going to be <coughs> next. Uh, we got. Yeah. I think we, we. I know we've got some other um, uh, files in the iron, as it were. Um, I think we've got uh, other games, other big games as well coming up. Uh, yeah. Which we'll have to have a little chat about because uh, I know we've been, yeah, yeah. we've been invited to a few. Uh, right. and, and, and of course, we'll be invited to to whatever Evan uh, puts out over in. Yeah. Europe, yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously. Yeah, uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, goes without saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but I think, think then it's, it's towards the end of the year, then, isn't it? Yeah. So um, calendars are open at the moment. We'll 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 attend pretty much everything if we've got the uh, time to. I, I did remember what was the comment that um, uh, Pixie came out with a while back, um, and it was it was about saying that you know you'd love to go to all of them, but you just can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I think that's the, uh, that is a big issue, isn't it? I'd love to go to all of these, but having the time and the money and the resources to do it, yeah, 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 um, is is absolutely huge. That's the only thing that stops me at the moment. I think when I win the lottery, and um, <laughs> that is predicated on starting doing the lottery you can see the floor in my plan um i think that's what i'm going to spend my life doing i think just going around to all these larps and just taking it all in i won't, I won't have a house or anything because i won't need one i'll be an, under canvas pretty much all the time um and, but and, it would and be a so canvas good. at that point mate you'd be buying a winnebago i mean come on well i don't need to i've almost got a canvas style winnebago now when you yeah, think you about are. it yeah, i mean are. it's yeah, pretty yeah, yeah, yeah. It is impressive, though, right, Stu? Yeah. Oh, yes. It's uh, yeah. your your bell end is very impressive, mate. <laughs> um, uh, to to David Fellows, hello. How's things, mate? How's things? All good. Uh, Age of Ether. I have a sneaky feeling we've been invited. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I <laughs> think we have. We'll have to look at look look at the calendar, Pixie. Age of uh, Ether. Yeah, just yeah. Just to let you know, I think we have. If not, then get whoever runs that. Give us a shout. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's game of the year in October, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pretty sure we have. Uh, Always this, good. That's that. That's in my mind there. Um, Steve. Oh, one for you, Luke. Uh, a steampunk LARP based on H.G. Wells in the 1800s. You guys would love it. Yeah, Luke would love that. No, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> Not what? steampunk. I love the whole con. No, no, I don't. No, no I can't see it. No. Yeah. No, can... no, no, no. We're going to get you along when I'm going to be the, the typical British dad. He doesn't like steampunk. Send him to steampunk. Right. Send him to steampunk. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Evan, it's been absolutely wonderful to talk to you. Uh, thank you very much for, for putting up with our, our ramblings uh, as, as well. You know. <laughs> hey, well, great. I got to uh, see a few websites, which is uh, always good to see. Yeah. It's always good. <laughs> Every community that's out there, just be inspired and, and, and see what they're doing. You know. Um, stay and 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 to to coin a phrase of your current president that might not be around much longer, let's make LARP great again. Yes, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I've been really good this time. You have. I've not said anything detrimental to the Americans. You got it good this time. You did. Yeah, well, yeah, because the doing a, a space force LARP. Wouldn't that be great? I don't know if you've heard of space force. <laughs> and the line belongs in space force all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make space great again. <laughs> You'll have to all have that hair, though, won't you? That tremendous flick coming back with its own little orbit round it. Mm -hmm. oh, well, it has some Verhoeven, uh, as I would pronounce it, influences from the 90s of the Starship Troopers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, C and Williams is getting his steampunk LARP outfit out. He's got to dig it out, though. I'm not so sure what that is. No, I mean... Can you do that? <laughs> Put some cogs on it. Oh God, I 
Fantastic. It's very interesting. What what kit have you are you wearing at the moment? I can see a red. Should, do you always dress like that? Is this just nighttime attire for you, Evan? Evan. Hey. Oh, sorry. Is it nighttime? No, no, no. You're just well, wearing. <laughs> uh, looks as if you're wearing LARP kit. Yeah, you, I was. Got... I sort of dressed up. I have oh, a, a um a tunic or or a sleeveless nice. uh, cotton uh, Renfair garb, and then I have my uh yeah. yeah. My pirate top here, so looks like I was at a fair play. Yeah. Um, nothing else. That's all you're wearing. <laughs> that's why we don't want you to stand up. Uh, if that's okay, this is a family show, and um, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I'm sure some of the ladies in here would want to do what they. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't wear too much. It's uh, 90 degrees here in New York, and my AC is. If you have pointless cogs on your kit, you will get punched in the dick. <laughs> that's not that's not this ref's opinion, more this person's. This person's. <laughs> that's fighting talk, that is, it from is, Pixie, yeah, isn't it? it, is, it is, Pixie's yeah. going to get it. it is. Well, it's going to get something. We're not yeah. too sure what it is. <laughs> so we're full of it. We're just hot air. That's it. Yeah, Pixie, Pretty. you're going to have it. But we're not Pretty. too sure what that is going to consist of at the moment. Pretty but you're having all of it. Right, so so let's let's get out of here before we get ourselves into any more trouble. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's possible. <laughs> well, now we've offended the Americans and yeah. we've done Pixie now, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. Cian's been really quiet, so we can't pick on him. It's a dinner and date. What do you? What is this foreplay for you, Pixie? What's going on? Um, but yeah, so I reckon we've done everyone. We haven't had a go at Thomas actually. Where is he this week? Uh, Tom is actually playing World of Warcraft. Love him. Yeah, it's the it's the new expansion uh, of right. the, the latest iteration of the right. Blizzard game World of Warcraft. Uh, you can go and find him over at Redundant UK. Uh, it's probably what he will be if he plays too much World of Warcraft. Uh, redundant, that is. Uh, <laughs> and um, you know, so so do he is over on, on, on Twitch. Do go watch him. He is actually, yeah. he is actually quite funny when he's playing. He's really good, actually, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. What he about is. Rob? Where's Rob this week? Rob was travelling back uh, from where ah, well he from was working. Green cloaks? No, 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 Green no, no. Cloaks? Yeah, he was, no? was last weekend, but he's, he's that's wor- right. He was working um, up, up country somewhere today. Uh, uh, not in Rome this time. He was working oh, in Rome gosh. the other day. I don't know. Yeah, 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 Rome. International traveller, that's what it is. Yeah, Marvellous. Yeah. That's why it's so just me and you then, uh, Stu. It was always only ever going to be us. Yeah, mate, you know. Peace well, the, uh... <laughs> we're keeping, keeping <laughs> so, it real. So, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> a massive thank you to Evan, you know, for, like I say, for putting up with our ramblings. Um, and a big thank you, of course, to our lovely patrons who make it a little bit easier to keep this show going. Um, if you'd like to sort of uh, help us out, go across to patreon.com forward slash laugh book and uh, just, you know, a dollar a month just really helps put this show together, helps us buy things, helps us get places, etc. And, and that does sort of uh, help out because right now everything's coming out of our own pockets. But there we go. Um, so if you would like to get in contact with the show, just email contact us at laughbook.com. Is there a topic you'd like us to discuss or something cool you saw or fancy writing an article for the website? Then email the show. Contact us at laughbook.com. Uh, the theme music was written by Bradley Parsons and you can fi- find him at fiverr.com forward slash Bradley Parsons. Awesome, awesome chap, by the way. Um, did, a, did a very good price for us, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, the shop uh, where you can buy things like the, the, the wonderful mug and what have you that's behind me and, and, and T-shirts and blah, blah, blah. That helps us out as well. Is actually over at uh, facebook.com forward slash book forward slash shop. Uh, you can listen to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Twitch. Just search for book I'm sure you will find it in whatever podcatcher you actually use. Um Website is at laughbook.com. Yeah, there's fair play to Rob as well. He puts up a lot of very great, uh, good articles. And, he does. And, and the stuff that we do as well. He also yeah. uh, writes up, bless him. Uh, <laughs> you know, trying to catch up with those. Uh, we're also, of course, on Facebook, Twitter. Just search for Laughbook. Right, yeah, honest to God, you'll, you'll find us. Uh, over on Instagram, we are the Laughbook because they wouldn't let us have Laughbook. 
It's not a bone of contention. Honestly, every single week you bring that up. Honestly, know. Well, you know, and we only do a monthly show. I know. Uh, <laughs> I just realised what I said. I've, just, I've got to tell you this. I've got to Go tell on. Pixie's going to kill himself with this. Uh, I know I need glasses or I need better glasses because I read one of Pixie's comments uh, as, as actually being this. And I have to say it made me laugh a little bit until I reread it. And it said, if anything, I was. He actually put fighting. I read fisting. <laughs> and 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 there, there comes the uh, what's the uh, on, on iTunes? We got it. Oh, the explicit tag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no it's just i read it wrong that was yeah. all i you know I had to read it a few times and he was talking i was like they're going right pixie i don't even know you i'm not that kind of girl <laughs> yeah 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 no don't. no i am you i'm worse you, you you really are so like i said you know go go, go search for us yeah you, you'll find us and don't forget to give us a five-star review so that's uh me Stuart. that's luke and that's evan Thank you very much for coming along and have a fantastic LARP, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, then.